this is the moment. The Bachelorette is back. Yeah! And the power. I'm gonna fall in love. Is in Jen's hands. And I'm gonna do it my way. ABC Mondays. Everything about her is great. I feel so special. Jen's looking like a queen. My men are very, very hot. Someone call 911. <laughs> you are looking so fire. This is the beginning of a new era. The Bachelorette. All new Mondays, 8, 7 central on ABC and stream on Hulu. Lucky Land Casino. Asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori Watson and the co-host of Foreplay. I'm your co-host, George Fowler, former firefighter, your couple's therapist who loves to talk about sex. Woo, let's discuss everything about the best sexual techniques to building your emotional intimacy, which is really necessary for great sex. We bring sound, concrete tools to reframe your relationship problems and learn how to fall in love again and feel desire. Listen to Foreplay Radio on the iHeart app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey everybody, welcome. And thank you for listening to this episode of Marriage Therapy Radio. My name is Zach Brittle. I'm here with Laura Heck. I do want to say a special and specific thank you to our listeners. Um, we know many of you by name. Sometimes we think there's only about a half a dozen of you, but last week uh, was the second most downloaded episode of Marriage Therapy Radio ever. I don't know if there was anything especially special about that episode, but it does signal to us that you're out there, that you appreciate what we have to offer, and that keeps us going. So I really do want to say thank you. Um, you know, sometimes Laura and I start these episodes with a plan. We have this idea of what we want to talk about. Maybe we even mapped it out. That's actually what was happening in this episode. But uh, we started talking and the plan went out the window and we just started kind of connecting about things that were on our mind. These are sometimes my favorite episodes, especially because they come from interactions that Laura and I might have with our clients during the week. I had some very cool conversations with uh, some clients that I love uh, about things that were going on for him. We talk about the three reasons that couples fight. We also talk about conversations that are uh, without consequence, but that aren't inconsequential. That's a fun topic for me. Laura's on the road. She's prepping for a big talk, so she's got some stuff on her mind. As always, this is a very cool conversation. Stick around. You're busy. You're on the road, but you're not on vacation. I want to make sure everybody knows you're not on vacation. Yeah, that's the distinction you're, you're I have to make with my own husband, although he finds a way to make his, his business trips very vacation-like. Well, I was like, Laura, if you don't want to, if you don't want to record today, it's fine. Like, why don't you just go? And you're like, no, I think I'll be bored in my hotel room by myself. And I was like, that sounds amazing. Yeah, it's actually I would been love to be bored in a hotel uh -huh. room by myself right now. It'd be like the most amazing thing. It's pretty awesome. I have to say, although it's a three hour time change, I'm, I'm in Connecticut. And so I woke up and I'm like, oh, geez, the day is burning. It's like nine, nine o'clock in the morning. Actually, it was eight o'clock in the morning here. And which means that I had really woken up at five o'clock my time. I was really it just mm -hmm. ugh, time zone changes are the worst. Where exactly are you? I'm in West Hartford. OK. And I told if I get outside, that would be phenomenal. Um, but I'm also kind of like uh, ambulatorily uh, limited right now. Is that a word? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, so I'm pretty sure it'll be a fly into the airport, Uber to the hotel, stay in the hotel, Uber back to the airport. And that's about all I'm going to get of Hartford. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have to tell you, like, I, I have this presentation that I'm doing. I'm so excited. Um, one of my favorite things. I'm excited because I don't think that this group knows what's coming. <laughs> Okay. I don't, uh, I don't think that they, I think that's the best. I do too. I mean, I, I'm going to kind of explain like, Hey, that, you know, you might've come here thinking that I was going to talk at you for three hours and it turns out I'm a couples, you know, therapist and you're going to talk to your partner for three hours. Ha ha. Uh -oh. <laughs> that's what I'm going to be like, uh, can I have another, uh, vodka tonic please? But, um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm really excited about that, but I didn't realize that I was invited as the presenter to come to the one hour uh, meet and greet social hour, mm -hmm. which is like mm -hmm. nails on a chalkboard to Laura Heck. That is where like literally as I'm talking about it, I'm, I'm not breathing anymore. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, like yeah. the introvert in me, it just wants to hide in the corner and I want people to approach me and say, hi, you're the only one in this room. I don't know. And I'm like, hi. Yeah. 
but I'm going to have yeah. to be, you know, social. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I had to, you know, I had the same thing this weekend. Uh, we had the high school booster club auction. Okay. Like, so it was maybe, I don't know, 300 people in a room. Yeah. And like cheerleaders were there and there was a marching band playing and there was you know, a little silent auction and there was alcohol was flowing. And I was like, please, God, kill me right now. Please, would you please just kill me right now? Because my Re- Rebecca was like totally in her element and just like, and everybody was so happy to be together. Yeah. But I was, just, I was the MC, So I just, Shut I did. Shut the I just, front I just, door. You were the MC. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I was like, I, I know what job I can do. I'll just be the MC. And I was the auctioneer. I was the guy who was like, and we're looking for 1000. Who's got 1000. Give me 1500. Can I get 1500? Who's got, where? See, there, I would I love I that. that. I love being, yeah. it. you're going to be great. Yeah. No, no, no. But you're it's different. It is. Di- oh, I just had this conversation with someone. It was like a light bulb moment for all of us where they said, I am, this is kind of a, an introvert extrovert. Um, but before I get there, I just want to say, I think you would be an amazing auctioneer an amazing MC. I was all right. I think it was amazing. I did pretty good. I had this joke. Uh, I was going to ask like how many dad jokes were sprinkled throughout. <laughs> so many. I bet. <laughs> so I bet. many. How many of them were uh, good? The lady, the lady, none. The lady who hired me was like um, super conservative, like just really like uh, politically, religiously conservative. And I was giving her such a hard time like the whole week mm-hmm. up to, I was like, can I make a joke about this? Can I make fun of these people? Can I do that? And she was like, she kept looking at me like, please God, don't, don't ruin my whole life. Yeah. But I got up there and I was like, Hey, I just want to welcome you guys all to the, uh, the Shorewood booster club. And speaking of boosters, I'd like to check in with everybody about their vaccine status. And the, I swear to God, the room was like dead silent. <laughs> nobody, dead silent. nobody laughed. Did anybody <laughs> walk like, on stage and slap you? That's all I just need to know. I was like, I was like, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. I'm not allowed to talk about religion or politics or what's the other Sex. controversial thing. And I was like, Russell Wilson. <laughs> And then everybody laughed because because uh, it is we don't know what we're gonna how we feel about Russell Wilson. Yeah, we don't talk about Russell, Russell, Russell. <laughs> yeah, get it? If you know, you know. I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, okay, that was fun. I sold some stuff. I was just gonna say, I bet you made some money, some dollar bills. We did good. We did good. Can I t- just explain? We didn't come in with this any any sort of plan, but I thought this was an interesting distinction. I tell my couples that I will never disclose you on the podcast, but I might talk about what I'm seeing. And this was like such a game changer where I have partners that have fundamental differences. One's an introvert, one's an extrovert. And Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he says, she doesn't like people. She goes, that's not true. I do like people. And he, uh, or no, she said, I don't like people. And he said, I disagree. She is constantly with people in groups. She is like the president of this organization. She's the, uh, you know, like, secretary of this organization and she has the blah, blah, blah. And this organization, I said, okay, so here's the difference. And this is similar to Laura Heck and maybe to you too, is that it's painful to walk into a room where your role is not defined. Like I am 100% on fire when I am the presenter and I'm on the stage. But if you put me in a room with those people and I don't have a defined role and I'm just amongst a sea of people, that's where I shrink and I get uncomfortable. And so with this particular woman, she thrives and and then creates her community of connection around these organizations where she has a designated and specific role. And that's how she thrives. And I pointed that out and both of them were like, mind blown. And I was just like, okay, so how do you use that information in your relationship to be able to create safety and connection among like in the outside world? And he was like, so she just has to have a role. And I'm like, but bingo, like put her as the host of the party, the MC, the mm-hmm. whatever it might be. And she will thrive mm-hmm. because she knows her role and it's a safe connection place to be at. But I think we have that in common of needing to have a designated yeah. role. A hundred percent. Yeah. If I don't, if I don't know what to do, then I will, I will, I'll, I'll flounder. Yeah. Um, the hardest part of the of the auction was that it was during the Duke UNC game. Uh Oh, um, so I was like, okay, two things. One, do not, I said, don't do this. And I said, the second thing is do not tell me the score of the Duke UNC game. And wouldn't you know, somebody freaking told me the score of the Duke UNC game while you were up there. No, after the, after it was over, they're like, you did oh. great. And, and, and I was like, oh, whatever. And Duke lost. Duke lost, which was great. I, I'm just happy for that. Yeah. 
Uh, do you have something that you wanted to talk about today that's going to help couples? Just curious. <laughs> We're at the eight minute mark. <laughs> Who? What? what? What's the purpose of this podcast? <laughs> <Why do> we... <laughs> Just catching up with my buddy, Zach. You know that Zach and I are huge fans of getting support, and that is why we have partnered with BetterHelp to put you in contact with licensed professional counselors in your area. Tap into the world's largest network of licensed, accredited, and experienced counselors who can help you with a range of issues, including depression, anxiety, trauma, grief, relationships, and more. With BetterHelp's counselors, you get the same professionalism and quality that you would expect from an in-office counselor. With the ability to communicate when and how you want, whether it be messaging through the phone or video conferencing. The matching process is quick but thorough. Look, I know that a lot of therapists are booked out and difficult to get into, but don't let that stop you from getting the support that you need. The cost is less than half of what Zach and I charge, which is kind of unheard of. And when you register with BetterHelp, you are supporting Marriage Therapy Radio. Go to trybetterhelp.com MTR. So it's trybetterhelp.com forward slash MTR to register with BetterHelp. T-R-Y-B-E-T-T-E-R help H-E-L-P dot com forward slash M-T-R and you receive a special discount as a Marriage Therapy Radio listener. I was thinking about a lot of things, but even this idea of the role thing is Mm -hmm. uh, it comes back to me. I've been having this conversation a lot. I feel like maybe we've done this already, but just how important it is to understand the role that each of you have in whatever conversation you're having. And this comes from so many different spaces and places, but like one really easy one is when you get into a complicated uh, conversation or something that's going awry, who is there, right? Is it the parent, the adult, or the child? Mm -hmm. Um, And again, we've talked about this a whole bunch of times, but yesterday just had this really, really rich conversation with a couple. um, And I loved, I love how it played out because they got into a fight or an argument or a tiff or whatever it is about a phone call, a phone call to a storage unit company and the storage unit company. And, you know, it was because it was because of, it was, well, actually I was about to say it was because of stuff. Well, it was because of stuff. It was because of stuff and space. So they're having this conversation that was problematic about the storage unit, but what was really going on for them was that they were triggered by stuff and space as empty nesters who were trying to figure out what to do with their kids stuff Mm -hmm. and whether or not to host this, turn this one bedroom into a guest bedroom for their son who was probably not ever moving home again. And like, but they, when they got to that part um, and were able to differentiate between, it was really two children who were bickering about the storage unit phone call. (laughs) Um, But then the two adults started talking to each other and their roles became really clear, man, they, they did really rich and beautiful work. And so I don't know if that's exactly it. Yeah. Or just like acknowledging and kind of having these moments. Like the reason I said, um, did we hit record already? But the reason I said (laughs) they don't know what's coming. Oh, okay. Yeah. Earlier you're like, they don't know. I think that's the best part when people have an experience that they don't know what's coming. They're like, Oh, Mm. I did not see that coming. And maybe that's what's happening now is you're, as your couples are driving to this event and they're like, what are we doing? What is this thing? And why are we going to this? Yeah. Um, for them to have an experience where they go, oh, okay, mm-hmm. okay, which is what happened yesterday. But it, but I think w- the reason it didn't happen is because they lacked role clarity around, you know, who was in this conversation and what was and what was meant to what they were meant to accomplish. Yeah, you know, that's I I like the I have actually used that language most recently with a couple of mine um, where we were talking through you know, kind of similar, right? Talking through a tough conversation uh, that didn't go well. And they replayed it back for me. And I was like, well, who showed up for that conversation? We've already named one of them, the 16 mm-hmm. year old girl, right? Like what the, who mm-hmm. shows up is not the child. It's the snarky, you know, smart ass 16 year old girl that is like, <sighs> you know, like <sighs> yeah. huffy. And, yeah. uh, and the problem is that that 16 year old girl is really stinking activating to her partner. Yeah. 
So, you know, it was interesting that we kind of dissected that. And I said, all right, so like, what was the role? Who showed up? And I was like, ah, I see. That's Mm -hmm. really tough to have a good, like good conversation. If, if you've already given the reins over to your 16 year old girl, like Mm -hmm. maybe it's time for you to tell her to take a break. Um, and that's important. Well, and yeah, I think it totally is. And I think part of the, you know, the first step in any of that whole process is awareness. Right. Right. Cause she kept yes. going, well, how do we get my adult? How do I get my adult to come? And how do I get my adult to come? And I was like, you know, that's actually like part four, but part one is when you know that one or both of you is just not there. Yeah. Just not there. You mm-hmm. got to figure out how to just kind of stop. And they're like, how do I do that? And and for me, I was like, I think early on in the, in the, in the process, when you're just learning how to do that, you have to invoke your expert, like Zach and Laura, or in that case, it was me in the room and just go, Oh, this is that thing Zach would tell us to do. Or, Oh, I think this is the thing they were talking about on the podcast. Like you mm-hmm. almost have to like ridiculously intervene in yourself mm-hmm. in the same way you would, if you were like, I don't know, your foot's hurt or something, right? Like, um, at some point you have to say, how, what did my trainer tell me to do? Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom told me to run like this. Tom told me to do like, I love invoke. that you named him Tom. Cause Tom is quite literally the name of any trainer I've ever had in my life. Yeah, I know. I know this. That's love maps. We have good love maps. Like. No, we do. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, but you know what I mean? Like almost to go, the reason I'm doing this is because Tom said, Oh yeah, that's the problem. Not mm-hmm. because you've mastered the skill yet. Right. Cause I think people want to get to that part. They want to get to mastery. Right. No, you got to do um, just awareness. Step one. Totally. Totally. Uh, okay. We're starting like step one as if, as though I somehow know what step two, three and four are. Right. I know <laughs> we're not actually going to get to any of the other steps. Just awareness no, is step here's one. A, here's a key thing that I think is important. I love this because, you know, I love wordplay, but um, <laughs> remedial it sounds remedial to invoke your therapist. Like that sounds like a remedial task or like something that's really basic. Even tonight when you're when you're talking to these people who are highly, highly competent in their field, right. their chosen field. Mm hmm. And you're going to say, hey, I want you to do these super duper basic things. Right. Um, th- there's going to have this feeling that it's remedial, but the, mm-hmm. but the word remedial and remedy have the same root. They're the same. So, oh. yeah, you can be like, this might feel remedial, but, but, I, but it's actually really real. When, when we talk about how to correct flaws. Hello, it is Ryan, and we could all use an extra bright spot in our day, couldn't we? Just to make up for things like sitting in traffic, doing the dishes, counting your steps, you know, all the mundane stuff. That is why I'm such a big fan of Chumba Casino. Chumba Casino has all your favorite social casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere with daily bonuses. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. That's ChumbaCasino.com. Sponsored by Chumba Casino. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. I think it was Newt Rockley maybe who was like blocking and tackling, blocking and tackling, blocking and tackling. That's mm-hmm. what we do in football, you know? And we have to get back to those just really super duper basic things. And if you don't have those skills at the ready, yes, invoke your podcast, invoke your therapist, invoke mm-hmm. that speaker that was on stage last night, you know, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Because learning, knowing that I'm not in my best skin yeah, is just the beginning. Uh, so the this I guess with step one, the tip that I would give and the one that I ask for folks, like if you're driving down the road right now and you're listening to this and you're kind of like, hmm, okay, so how do I do step one? I would say name the thing that shows up for you. Like there is a part of Laura Heck that shows up um, when I'm not in my best self. And, I, you know, I'm trying to think, I'm like, well, how old is that person? Like, what do they look like? What are they wearing? What's the experience? And generally that like that piece of me that shows up is a fear of taking risks, um, doesn't have a growth mindset, is pretty stuck and rigid. Like that's the Mm -hmm. human being that shows up. And when I think about who that person is, it's Laura Heck at about mm, 10 years old. I would mm-hmm. say is like my 10 year old self. And where does that come from? Comes from a childhood of not having a ton of certainty and a lot of change. And so what made me feel really good when I was 10 years old was consistency, was rigidity, was predictability. And so when I'm not at my best self, I rely on that 10 year old coming out. And that Mm -hmm. 10-year-old is like not a very fun partner to be with. And a lot of times it's a no. That's where I say a lot of no's to my partner, to my husband, or to my child. 
So I guess like, who is that 10-year-old child? What would I name her? So this is me starting to uncover so that I can have some awareness when that 10-year-old is showing up. So I don't... uh, So I'm thinking, okay, what was the nickname that I had when I was a little girl? Well, actually, little Laura is what a lot of people called me because my mom's name is Laura as well. So it was big Laura and little Laura. She didn't love the big part, but you know what? That's you named me. So that's what you get. So I would say little Laura shows up and the awareness is when I'm in that conversation with my partner and I'm saying a lot of no's. And I'm pretty stinking rigid and I'm looking for some, I don't know, predictability. I can say, ah, dang, there she is. Like little Laura has shown up. And I like giving a name and a persona to that piece of you that's showing up because I think it's a lot easier to recognize and to do that stage one, that step one. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I think the other thing that you you kind of keyed on to me before is um, I think about this book that we recommended a million times. It's called We've Had This Fight Before. Mm. And it's the notion that couples don't have 300 fights. They have three fights. And um, it reminded me that, um, and I, and I stole the premise and I, and I changed it a little bit because I realized that people often are, uh, here, here's what I'm trying to say. It, once you kind of are aware of who's showing up, you have to kind of understand why you're showing up. Like right. when you get into a conversation about say a storage unit, in 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 this new premise that I'm toying with, there's one of three things that are happening. You you are digging into your preference. That'd be number one. Please tell me there's two more P's coming up. There definitely are two more P's. I, I know you so well. Go <laughs> um, on. Yeah, we have good we have good love maps. We have yeah, we do. Maps. Um, no preference. Like the reason I think this about the storage unit is because little Laura d- established this preference. Like just she had this thing that she learned about um, stuff or space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, whatever the second one is about uh, precedent, mm-hmm. meaning this is kind of what's come before. We've always done it this way. Why wouldn't we do it? Why, why, what is, where's this idea for change come on? But yeah. the third one is about pain, mm. right? So when, when Claudia Groff grounds, who wrote the book, wrote it, she talked about how people have the fight. Why aren't you more like me? Why aren't you more like my family? And why can't you hear my pain? When, when, when you can stop an argument and go, Hey, ultimately what we're talking about here is just what we prefer. Mm-hmm. And now we have to talk about like, why do I prefer that? Or where does that come from? Or right. should we flip a coin? Or like, mm-hmm. what is the, because there's no right or wrong. In this case, it was about whether or not to get one that was, had controlled heating. Yeah. Cause it costs <laughs> a little bit more every month. It costs a little bit more. And maybe there's some stuff and I don't know. I feel like this mm-hmm. is a better preference. Like, so, but then they're digging, <laughs> but they're going off on this like whole thing, you know? And then there's precedent precedent would be, well, we got one with controlled heating before, or we didn't. And the papers got ruined, you know, or maybe it's just like my family always owned. And in fact, for him, his part of the argument was he has emptied out so many storage units from friends who have passed away and found it so depressing and like, Mm. um, unnecessary that stuff Mm -hmm. took over so Mm -hmm. much, you know, whatever. So for him, the precedent was around how useless this activity of storing stuff is. Wow. You know, but yeah. then there's pain and the pain was coming from, the, like I said before, the empty, the, nesting. the empty nesting part. Yeah, And so they're talking about the storage unit. Yeah. But all of these preferences and precedents and pain points are in, in competition. And they, and when they finally stopped long enough to go, oh, oh. okay, we're talking about $30. Right. We're talking about $30. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Does know? that really matter? What you matters know? is what's underneath. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess it was $30 a month or a quarter or something. I don't remember exactly. But when they finally put a label on that, we weren't talking about $30. We were talking mm-hmm. about our entire the constructed meeting. persona. Mm-hmm. Um, and both of them were really going into some childish places and spaces. Um, How did you get them to that space? Because it sounds like they showed up unaware of what their roles were at home, like left to their own devices. They're, you know teenage self or their little Laura or whatever was showing up. And that's what they were showing up to have this debate about. But then somehow in your office, did you clarify like, Hey, at this point, we're going to have a hard conversation and I need for both of you to choose the role that's going to best fit with speaking to your adult partner. No, very specifically. Um, we went through aftermath of a fight. Yes. Um, so good. So, uh, for context, aftermath of a fight is one of the kind of the scripted, 
rules-based conversations that you can learn within the Gottman method that really is about processing an event and trying to make sure that we have a context to prevent that from happening again in the future. So yeah. we went through that step by step, um, which they had done several times and kind of, I was like, well, why don't we try aftermath and see what happens here? And then they, um, what's cool about it is that they, because they've done it several times, they've kind of gotten a little bit better at it and it's evolved and it, um, it like we were able to parachute out of the actual script into kind of the, the deeper stuff. And I think mm -hmm. what I would say to couples who are curious about that is it, th this stuff is just stuff you practice, you practice, right. you get better. I mean, right. it's just a skill learning how to process conflict is just a skill that you yeah. can practice and get better. And for them, it was really, really deeply rewarding. I, I think I haven't said this to you yet. Have I talked to you about how uh, I've been playing with this other thing about how I think people need to have more conversations that are, People need to have couples need to have more conversations that are without consequence, but aren't inconsequential. Did I tell you this yet? Hold on. The people need to know. Okay. Please. So, okay. We need to, basically, we need to have more conversations that are just, just for fun. Right. But okay. that aren't shallow. Okay. Like we go outside and we talk about the weather. That's a conversation that has no consequences. And that's also inconsequential. Uh huh. But if we talk about like, Meaningful okay, you know conversation. How, yeah, but you know how I've always said, like, um, who's your best friend in fourth grade? Yeah. I've changed this question, too. If you think back to fourth grade, you, Laura, think back to fourth grade. Okay. If you were on the playground in the fourth grade. Yeah. What were you doing? Uh, I don't know. Having a great time playing wall ball. Okay. You're playing wall ball with, like, two or three other people? Sure. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Some people were standing right next to the teacher. Some yeah. people were sitting on a bench reading a book. Some people were playing the big team yard game yeah. that everyone was playing. Right. And some of us, most of us are still doing some version of whatever we were doing on the fourth grade. Yeah. Right. So we could take your wall ball thing and go, yeah, that makes total sense. The mm -hmm. introvert and you with just a few people and you knew exactly mm -hmm. what your role was and you like made perfect sense to be in this place because you didn't have to do the whole big team thing. And what do I do if I don't have the ball? And which yeah. my job here? And some people were the captain of that team game. They were the organizer and they're still mm -hmm. doing that, right? They're oh, still that was running. probably me. I was probably bossing people around because I needed they're a role. They're still running the, the booster auction, right? They're yeah. still doing the thing. <laughs> and so, but that conversation that we could have for 15 or 20 minutes mm -hmm. is, is not inconsequential. Right. And there are no consequences. We don't mm -hmm. have to be like, so it was better to right. be on the wall ball court than it was to be on a bench reading books. Okay. So and I'm, I'm the winner of this back. fourth grade conversation. I'm Wait, let me finish back. one more. Okay. 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 Let me just finish because I think people need to have more conversations like that just so that they enjoy talking to each other mm -hmm. so that when they do get into a conversation about the storage unit, mm -hmm. th which has consequences because we have to make a decision, right? They can remember that, Oh, I actually like talking to you. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking to my, little baby girl that I married and who's right. acting like a foolish person. I'm talking to somebody who's like complex and nuanced. And the reason she's making this call is because she was standing right next to the teacher. And the person who stands right next to the teacher really is thinking about all the whatever, you know, right. but, um, but my, yeah, that's my new, um, my new little jam is I want people to have conversations that are without consequence, but aren't inconsequential. Go push back. Okay. Here's my pushback is that, um, I have partners that are afraid to have conversations at all Yeah, because in their relationship, they have built up this uh, awareness that when I broach any topic at all, somehow it goes wrong. And so the there trust are consequences. Is, there's consequences, but yeah. it's like, it shouldn't have gone wrong. Like, right. We're, we're talking about something that is benign. Actually, you know what? Maybe that's the problem is that it has been the income. Well, it's been conversations that have been shallow. There hasn't mm -hmm. been much depth to it. And they're maybe inconsequential. they're inconsequential. And maybe that's because they're not, it's too easy, right? It doesn't force that they show up as their best self. They feel like they can just kind of go on autopilot and have a conversation. It doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't feel good. They can easily allow it to spiral. But a lot of couples have resistance to having some of these deeper conversations. Like even when we pull out our love map questions uh, or open-ended questions, it, there can be trepidation 
and fear of, of having that level of vulnerability because it hasn't gone well. When I open up and I share some piece of myself, at some point I have learned the lesson that this isn't a safe space to do it in because mm-hmm. we have gotten into it because it, the conversation is spiraled. We haven't used repairs and I just walk away feeling more disconnected. And so I have learned to put up walls and I don't want to have those meaningful conversations. I just want to mm-hmm. stay up here on the shallow level, I want to talk about shop talk. I want to figure out like kids and their schedules, but I don't want to dig a little bit deeper. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you are in that space, if you're hearing Zach say, have deeper conversations that don't have consequences and all you're thinking is yes, but there have always been consequences, no matter how the conversation started Mm -hmm. or what we're talking about. I think it just, you might need a therapist you might need some practice. You might need to just step a little bit into the fire and see how it goes. Well, here's the reality. Anyone who is listening to you say that, or anyone who is in our office, or the people who are coming to this event tonight, they are conceding already that they are interested in learning how to do this better. Okay. Right? That's true. And so, like, this is what you got to do. You got to practice. And it could be, there's tons, right? Like, who taught you how to ride a bike? Me? Yeah. Oh, my mom. I have the I have best memory of it ever. Cool. Like, let's have that conversation for 10 minutes. Okay. And I'll tell you about how I learned how to ride a bike. And we can talk about learning how to ride a bike. And then we can go, hey, oh my gosh, we're out of time. How about we go get some ice cream? Mm-hmm. I think more conversations ought to end with, you want some ice cream? <laughs> Not like. Why? Why? Well, because, because, because it's like, it, it, we just had a nice time. We just had a nice time. We don't have to draw any conclusions. We don't have to like win this conversation. We just go, okay, cool. Um, I'm going to get some ice cream. You want some ice cream? And it's just like the representation of this pleasant way to move on from the thing we were talking about. Mm -hmm. That wasn't a deep conversation that we had Mm -hmm. to have about our life or Mm -hmm. (laughs) that tell you about these guys. Um, um, They were going on vacation and they had a very specific task to have some conversations about their relationship and when they got back, I said, how did your conversations go? And they said, we didn't do them. I said, why not? They said, well, we just realized we would rather have drinks by the pool or have sex or go rock climbing. And I was like, of course, all okay. of that sounds really amazing. Like, of course you would do that. But why, why, why wouldn't you also have a conversation with one another? Well, I was like, well, it's more fun, right? You get to have this nice little buzz or you get to have sex and there's a dopamine hit and the intimacy, Mm -hmm, or maybe you mm -hmm. rock climb and you overcome something. Like, why can't your conversations with one another be like that? Like that? Where you just go, hey, we had a nice conversation. We got a little buzz. We felt intimacy. Mm -hmm. We overcome Mm -hmm. a little bit of a challenge. And then we were like, how about we get some ice cream? Mm -hmm. Maybe they didn't feel prepared by their therapist to go off and do that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe, they didn't feel maybe it was their therapist's fault, fault for sure. That yeah. is a possibility. I mean, I always allow myself to be the scapegoat in why people didn't do their homework. So I didn't well, prepare you I think, well enough. Well, sure. That is fine. If they blame their therapist, great. That means the two of them are bonding about something. Right. Yeah. And also, it's the exact opposite of saying, why are we supposed to do that? Oh, because... Laura told us to like, right. That sometimes that just needs to be a good enough reason. Cause right? Laura told us to, or Zach told us to, or because that nice lady was on the stage with the really appropriate outfit. She told us to, or, the, <laughs> or, or that pie. Why do we listen to this podcast? Well, th- well, let's try this thing out. Who was your best friend in fourth grade? What were you doing on the playground? Who did teach you how to ride a bike? Like, let's just talk about those and just enjoy being connected as mm-hmm. functional adults in mm-hmm. a way that, helps us, you know, uh, buffer some of the more challenging ones when, you know, preference or pain or precedent comes in and invites you to be a little child. Here's uh, my last tip. And then I think we need to land this lane is that the, (laughs) I think that there is so much power in having a finite beginning and a finite end that like, what's the role? What are we doing here? Okay. We're going to solve a problem. Well, let's take the next 30 minutes to talk about it. And then if we don't reach a conclusion, fine. Like we'll come back to it. We'll circle back to it. It's like you set up like these board meetings with your partner. Or um, I think the reason why a date is so powerful is because there's sort of like a finite beginning and a finite end. Sure. And um, I think that when we 
establish, hey, like we have two hours with a babysitter. Let's go out and make the freaking most out of these two hours while we have mm-hmm. a babysitter. You're going to make the most of that time. Yeah. Um, when you're on vacation, you have a finite beginning and a finite end. We need to get closer, reconnect, have sex, have these conversations while we're on vacation. So I'm a huge fan of reducing the ambiguity. Here comes little Laura, right? Like I need some mm-hmm. rigidity. I need some boundaries, I need clarity, I need predictability. Um, I need all of these things. And, and when you have one partner that has been bitten in the past or is fearful of entering into this, then set some boundaries around it and say, it's like the stress reducing conversation. It's only going to last 20 minutes, right? Mm-hmm. You're in, you're out. Uh, set some boundaries around it. Like, hey, let's just sit down totally. and for the next 20 minutes while we're eating dinner. Let's just go through the open-ended questions card deck or let's just ask each other about childhood, whatever it might yeah. be. And then dinner's over and you go, you want some and ice cream? You, yeah, you want some ice cream? Maybe and that'll be like we're the end the next code thing. word. You want some ice totally. cream? Totally. I'm into it. All right. Um, I'll tell thing. you that story later because it's a real story from my real life that I that I don't want to share on the podcast, but I think you'll get a kick out of it. I think I have heard this story, but I don't remember it. So we'll Maybe. talk about it after, <laughs> after we hit stop. Okay. All right. Listen, good luck on your talk. Thank you. I hope you, I hope you change lives. I will. Don't worry. <laughs> and, uh, They're going to okay. love me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Adios. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Marriage Therapy Radio. A couple of resources out there for you. The first one is if you're noticing like, hmm, maybe we could get a little bit better. Maybe we should have a couples therapist or I could use an individual therapist. Uh, We have partnered with BetterHelp. If you go to Try Better Help, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P, BetterHelp, dot com forward slash mtr you get our discount uh, for being able to put you in touch with a therapist in your area you can utilize that relationship through video conferencing phone calls text messages emails i mean it's a therapist at your fingertips uh the second thing is check out zach's newsletter zach what is the name of your is it like things i write i think it's called things i write you can I sign don't have up a newsletter you don't have a newsletter <laughs> I mean, I have the thing called stuff I write, but I, I don't write there very much at all. So, but I appreciate you. Um, yeah. Appreciate you plugging it. Well, you can. The, yeah. yeah. Well, if they sign up for it, don't. I mean, whenever you feel like writing, because you yeah, obviously have a lot of stuff that you want to talk about. You got your three P's today. You got your two C's. Yeah, I don't write about therapist stuff over there though. So I just well, write. Fine. Stuff. People like you no matter how you show up. Okay. <laughs> Hey, hey, everybody. Thanks so much for all of your time and your attention, making this relationship better today than it was yesterday. Hey, everyone. It is Ryan Seacrest here. Ready to heat up your summer vacation? Get ready. Things are about to get sizzling at Chumba Casino. Your summer getting a whole lot hotter with a special daily login bonus waiting just for you. So, Sign up now for Reels of Fun and Reels of Prizes right here at Chumba Casino with yours truly. Join me at ChumbaCasino.com and dive into a summer of social casino fun. Sponsored by Chumba Casino. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply.